So let's see. Is this is this screen sixty three? Sixty three deals with the blank constructions, and the blank constructions are really simple to interpret. Recall that in the PowerPoint instruction, blank instructions were and so on. Well, as it turns out, since these are in hexadecimal, it's really easy to take and turn eight zero into eight, you know, seven zero into seven, six zero into six, five zero into five, etc. All we have to do is shift everything right four times. Divide it by 16, whatever. So, what we do for this is we make two words for this purpose. Yes, this should be right instead of left. I will change that. Uh, but for now, just pretend that says right. And we make a word for shift, which is two. And we make a loop to do this. Now, the do loop and forth like everything else in fourth takes its operands off the stack so everything is backwards the value you're going to count to is first the count the value you start from is after that so four times we do 4 0 do uh, shift right loop shift right loop shift right loop shift right loop then we take that result that's left over on the stack at that point and we one plus blanks and a matter of fact, I can demonstrate this for you right now. Let's say 8-0 hex. Let's see. Fourth hex 8-0 blanks. 8-0. 8-0 is now on the stack. Let's go ahead and take and shift that a bit. Yes, pretend that says right. There you go. So now that value is left on the stack. Now, if we go ahead and do a 1 plus, that value is now 9. And then, of course, if we hit dot, it displays it. Blanks 9. So there you go. That's how that works. literally. Moving on. Fetch next instruction. This one will take a little bit of explaining and walking through to show you, but what next instruction literally does is it you give it the address that you're currently at, you say plus next, it feeds you the address of this instruction and gives you the program counter to the next instruction. It makes the looping construct that you're going to build off of it much simpler. So what next looks like in practice is something like this. I'll go ahead and clear off the stack just to make sure. If you type a garbage work or whatnot, it will clear off the stack for you automatically. It's a quick way to just get rid of the stack. So, bc20, hex bc20, next. And let's have a look. Well, that's a blank instruction, and since it's a one byte instruction, there's no address associated with it, so it's zero. And the next instruction is bc21. We do this again. Dot, 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 get rid of those. U dot, u dot, u dot, unsigned. Now we do the same thing, bc21, next, etc. u dot, u dot, u dot. All right. Now let's go ahead and I'll skip forward to bc23. This is a three byte instruction that I happen to know. Look at that. We now have 42 in there with the address of bc40, and we have now advanced the program counter three plus in advance. This gives us everything that we need 
in order to do the instruction word on the next. But I'll go ahead and show you how the plus next word actually works. You'll notice that if I that it, since I used the dot here instead of u dot, it gave me signed representations of those values. So moving forward, let's go ahead and take a look real quick. at how each piece of this actually works. First we start and we look for a 3 byte instruction. Well I happen to know that there's a 3 byte instruction at BC23 so let's go ahead and start with that. Put BC23 on the stack as a number. We then duplicate that number because we're going to test against it later and grab a C at here to test at real quick. The C at says grab whatever byte is at B is at memory address BC23. Let's look at what how the stack looks for right now. We now have a 42 here, which is the LMS instruction plus mode 2. BC23 is also on the stack here. We then check to see if it is a is 3 byte. Is 3 byte grabs as as you recall one value off the stack. We'll grab the, it'll grab the 42 off the stack here. That's now a one. Watch what happens here. Watch this. I'm going to go ahead and simulate the if by dropping that if off the stack here. Kablamo. Now it's now just BC23 on the stack. So we duplicate it real quick to save it. We do see what's at that memory location again. Dup C. Then we use a word called swap. Swap will take these two values and reverse them in the stack as you can see right there. Then we go ahead and add one plus to this to increase the program counter. Okay. Now we can take that, duplicate that real quick, and grab the value at that. Then we do a little bit of stack gymnastics. Rotate is basically means take these three values and rotate them clockwise. Watch. Rotate. Rotate. Now we have the BC20, our program counter on top. We add two to that and look at the effects. and then we rotate it back down into the right place again. And there you go. There's our final there's the final that we saw before. So, utilizing again, utilizing the stack to our advantage, we can compactly do a lot of work in very short amount of space. The important thing to note here on the fact on in forth is that you need to master the stack. It is your responsibility, and if you master the stack, you can do some amazing things and forth. Moving on, the other part, we'll go ahead and clear the stack here, and I'll simulate the other part of next here. Which is the else statement here, which handles the one byte instructions. Very simple. All we do here BC20 is a one byte instruction. We'll do go ahead and test it. Of course, it's not a three byte instruction. Consume it. We are left with BC20 again. We take and dup C at. Get the, get the byte at that location. 
swap it, increment the program counter once, then we add a zero onto the stack and we rotate to put everything back as need be into place. So that's how plus next works, literally. Plus next gives us everything that we need in order to advance to the next instruction. Moving on, we now have bits and pieces to display an address. All this takes is a single 16-bit number as the address to display, and if it's zero, don't display it. It's really very simple. More prompt words. And of course, a program counter just gives us a nice little prompt for a program counter. Nothing spectacular here. And of course, we have prompt words for jump for JMP and JVB as well, as you can see. Now we get to 66. And now we have the instruction decoder. Now I won't go ahead and go through too much the ifs here because I've gone through them in other places. But what I'm essentially doing here, if the instruction is blank, then show the blanks prompt. If it's a JVB, then show the JVB prompt. If it's a jump, then show the jump prompt. Otherwise, it's a mode, so grab the, uh, so go ahead and duplicate the instruction twice here so we can pass it through mode and so we can pass it through extra bits here. Notice that these are nested instructions, so we can test each one. Fourth works really nicely with nested instructions to make sure that we don't double or triple or quadruple test anything. Finally, once this is completely done, then we swap the address in place and show the address. So given an instruction, we can then take and pass that right through to instruction for those three parameters and get our blanks here. Because I've designed these bits and pieces, I know which order they're going to go onto on the stack, I can structure the code to pull those bits and pieces off the stack in the correct order as I need to, and therefore I can make the code extremely efficient and extremely compact.